Okay, so I have a black spray painted cup and I want to test the tack it method using this yellow brick road glitter from It's Pretty Personal. I have not poured this on any black paper. I have no idea what color it's going to end up being on black, but I bought this with the intention of trying it for tack it on black. So I'm going to get started. <clears throat> I have my Aileen's tack it over and over here. And all I'm going to do is brush a coat on, let it dry for, uh, probably only going to take about 10 minutes right now. It's a little warm in this room. So, um, then I'm going to come back in, do a second coat, let that coat dry, and then I'll be back to apply the glitter. But, uh, don't forget your bottom if you do your bottoms. You don't want it too thick, so um, I just use a largest, large-ish soft brush. Nothing special. This brush, I think, is actually a Dollar Tree brush, so and just make sure you get full coverage. But the second coat is going to be exactly like this first coat. And again, we'll let dry for, I think, 10 minutes in here will be fine. But basically, you let it dry until you can't see the white anymore. You probably can't see much of the white, but I can tell. So, I will be back when it is time to apply the tacket. Okay, time for a second coat. So, again... I'm just going to take the same brush and start going over it. I'm just going to keep working it out because that was quite a big dip to begin with. And this time you'll be able to see more of the white as I apply it. And you can usually feel the resistance of the first coat on your brush when you go in to do the second coat. So I want less on my brush this time to do the bottom because I went quite heavy handed the first time. So you should get that bottom edge really good. <clears throat> Just gonna come around again and finish it off. Um, when you're doing tack it with glitter, you don't have to be quite as neat as when you're doing it with like a mica powder, a chameleon powder, any of that stuff, because the glitter is gonna lay flatter over it, over any rougher spots than the micas or chameleons will. So, and I'm not saying make it messy, but it doesn't have to be quite as neat. So, all right, I'm going to let this sit for about 10 minutes. I'm going to go rinse my brush now, and I will be back when it is time for glitter. Okay, so this has had a good rest. I'm going to sprinkle my glitter on, get some decent coverage. I probably walked away from this for more than 10 minutes. I got distracted. Happens. doing a pretty light coat. Doesn't have to be heavy, heavy, heavy. Once you start the tacket part, um, actually laying the glitter down, you're not going to want to be able to re you're not going to be able to reuse your glitter, or I don't recommend it anyways, because it'll be contaminated. So I'd suggest if you keep your glitters, 
glittering over a separate piece of paper and then just making sure it's got full coverage anyways I'd recommend going over one piece of paper and then cleaning it up before you move on to the burnishing part so I'm gonna clean this up I will be right back okay I just didn't want to lose all of that so now I am ready to burnish this down start with a couple fingers and just start buffing it down and this one is not going to go the same color shift as my other this is going to keep a yellowy rainbow which actually is going to look pretty spectacular but it is definitely not a replacement for my other yellow that turns that blue green so I'm not going to say I'm disappointed because I didn't really, looking at the shift in the glitter, expect it to do the same thing, but I wasn't sure what to expect. But man, it's pretty. I'll give it that. You're basically knocking off the excess and laying down any other glitter when you do the tacket method. That's why it ends up picking up so much of the shift. So This is probably going to become a peekaboo of some sort. You can kind of see, I can anyways, where you haven't laid the glitter down yet. This is so hollow, I almost have to look from the side. I can't really see it at the top. Uh, you can burnish with your bare hand. I prefer not to touch my glitter with my hand whenever possible. I just don't want to contaminate it in any way. Because I don't like to seal things if I don't have to. So That's why I choose to do it with a gloved hand. Just looking for those little spots that need a little individual attention yet. Don't forget your bottom. I just do my bottoms in a circular motion, basically. And around the rim. And don't forget to get your top edge as much as possible. This was pretty spectacular, even if it didn't do what I wanted it to do. So, I think, I think I'm pretty good. It feels pretty smooth. I don't see any chunky chunky spots I'm just kind of looking at it a little bit closer but wow look at that the shift in this glitter is freaking gorgeous so I am going to figure out what I'm going to do with this one and I will be back to get a coat of resin on it and uh, figure out what the finish is going to be. So I had a plan for this cup and I just realized when I was mixing the resin that this was the very very last tapered cup I had to work with 
And for what I had in mind, a straight would be so much easier for me. So I'm going to have to figure it out. But for now, I am just going to get the resin on here. And like I said, figure it out. I was going to do another one of those Sunflower Mama Cups, and I think I'm still going to. I've just got to figure out a different way to approach the vinyl than what my original plan was, because <laughs> I simply do not think I can pull off what I had planned on a tapered cup. So, um, I will be rethinking that and reconfiguring this in my head while I wait for this to dry. But I'm sure I'll make it work. I'm sure I'll be able to use the components I wanted to, just not exactly as I had originally planned. But I'm getting a good coat of resin on here. I mixed up about 20 mLs, 25, somewhere in there. And I'm just gonna get it smoothed on and let it dry and do its thing. And then I will be back for my water slide and the vinyl once I figure out what direction I'm headed with it. So, I will be back. Okay, so I am going to adjust my plan a little bit. It's going to get this water slide, and I'm kind of debating doing it directly onto this and just seeing what happens. Um, it's also going to get this vinyl. Um, I was going to do strips, but being that I am um, <clears throat> on a taper now, I think I'm just going to do it this way. So I'm going to trim off a little bit of this edge. And I'm going to try and get it as neatly started straight across the top as I can. And I am not sure how or where the taper is going to come into play in this case. So we'll find out. Got to pull that edge again, so yeah, go me. <sighs> All right, trying that again. I have to run the center down when I'm doing side to side. I don't know what I was thinking there. I mean, wasn't thinking, clearly. I'm just going to hold this edge on and burnish it down by hand. Okay. I'll turn it away from me a little bit. Hopefully I didn't pucker that too much. And I did stretch that a little bit, but you know what? It'll be fine. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to work on working out any bubbles. And 
around. You know, that's a trick. I'm gonna pop any bubbles that I got trapped, trapped. One of these days, I'm going to figure out the camera setup so you can see what I'm doing when I'm applying vinyl, and I can see what I'm doing. So, that side looks pretty good and even. Not too bubbly. This side I might have to trim just a tiny bit. Alright. So, I'm going to grab my little straight edge here. And I'm just going to see. See, that side's pretty good. This side is definitely off. So what I'm going to do is drop my X-Acto knife next to my foot. <clears throat> is I'm going to hang that straight and try to anyways. And I'm going to run my blade along that edge. And hopefully there. Now I have a nice crisp edge. So I cut a couple of little coppery gold strips to cover that edge. So I'm going to get one of those started. And I'm just going to try and get it lined up as close to the top as I can. And come down to the edge. Again, I am not perfect. I am me, and this is handmade. All right, I'm gonna spin the cup back, grab the other side. I have the hardest time getting these little vinyl strips started. As you know, there, beautiful. And I don't think I'm going to bother edging the bottom because I think that would make it like too boxy, and I don't want it to end up boxy looking. So, I'm going to, I'm a little nervous to put this water slide on here, but I think, I think it's enough black and color that it'll be okay. 
because I don't believe I have a second one printed to layer, but I'm just going to go ahead and give it a go. So, I've got my water slide and my water over here. I'm going to get it open back up. While that sits a minute, I'm going to get the cup a little damp. And I'm going to do this like a standard slide because I did not print this mirrored. Oh yeah, that'll work fine. not as vivid but I think it'll be all right I do need to um, kind of try and measure side to side here to get her centered so I do have a tape here I'm gonna go to the edge of the glasses which is just under one and a quarter on that side and a little over one and a quarter on that side so I'm just going to shift it one and a quarter one and a quarter perfect and I am going to squeegee any excess water out from under there I really should have trimmed this down more um, I'm hoping that great big edge blends once it's dry. It is over epoxy, so it should, but I wasn't thinking there, so yeah. Let's see. All right, I'm going to let the water slide dry. I'm going to let the vinyl sit and cure up a little bit, and I will be back to get some resin on this. Okay, time to get some resin on here. I've already got some KS Resin Liquid Stone mixed up. So, and I'm not going to add a layer of glitter to this one right now. I don't know. I might sprinkle a little white on the back. But I feel like this front is so sparkly that the back might not need it. So, I'm just going to leave it alone. Just going to let the vinyl be vinyl. So, the image is from Creative Fabrica. I will link that down below. The printed vinyl is from 143 Vinyl. And uh, the glitter is from It's Pretty Personal. And I will link to all of that below for you in case you're looking for it. So see the description and I will get you a close up on this in just a little bit. I'm gonna let it spin and settle a little. And get a couple other cups coated in the meantime. So I will be back to let you see how it's going to look finished. Okay, let's get a little look at this one. I absolutely love it. There's that printable vinyl. And here's our image coming around again. I think it looks great even over the glitter like that. So the bottom's just the tacky glitter but I will come back up so you can see a full rotation. So that is it for this one. I hope you like it and I hope it inspires you to do something. Thanks for watching.